But I mean, you know, honestly though, it's there's this charm about it though, because you know you'll meet someone there. They they either think that you're a fucking crazy person, or they think it's cute. Like girls, like you know, I'll meet a new girl and they'll be like, "Oh, you collect ca cards and comic books," and and they walk into your your place and they realize you do. <laughs> they either have they find the charm in it or they don't, you know. And I'm like, you can fit in my freezer. And they, you say it like that, and they usually get real happy. Can I ask, where's your, Whatever. where's your, Back to magic, how did it all Magic started off as a, uh, as a, a hobby. When I was a young kid, I did a lot of self-working magic tricks. Did some manipulation with cards, and I uh, just kind of took it as like up as a hobby, you know, and I would just, well, a pretty obsessive hobby, you know, you, you, you got to work the cards a lot to get them to do what you want. It gets all the women too, kids, if, if you watch it. If you're like 15 at home and, or 14 and you're, you're, you're not getting laid, well, you know, if you tell a girl you collect comic books and do card tricks, he'll be raking in the pussy. I'm tell no, honest, no, you won't. You won't. You sit home by yourself and masturbate a lot. Yeah, but the cards, they started off as a... I got, I was really into like the card slights and then I got really into the card juggling aspect of it, like the manip like the, the fancy cuts and all that shit, the extreme stuff. And that was, I don't know, it was just something that I just liked cards for some reason. And so what's, what's more of your style that you like? Mine is just the trickery, the, the sleight of hand, the manipulation, you know, like I, I, like I do all card tricks. I use a lot of the standard card moves and like what I tend to do is I will show people actually how I do my tricks and I like for them to see if I, I get caught or not doing the same thing and usually unless the person it has a magic background nine times out of ten they they won't get it they they don't they you know even if I say hey you know I just did this double lift or blah 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 they don't one of uh, 2006's biggest horror fads was uh, starting a podcast according to uh, Rue Morgue uh, the Canadian horror magazine you're listening to the Midnight Podcast. The podcast for all things zombie. And now over to your host, Root Rot. Welcome to the Midnight Podcast, a podcast dedicated to everything zombie. I am your host, Root Rot. People say, well, why Root Rot? Well, Root Rot is, um, I originally went to college to be a, um, a forest ranger, and Root Rot's a plant disease. And it was always like my password to get on, so I just used that as my persona. And then if you look up Root Rot, if you Google it, it would come up and it would be all plant diseases. That's it, when my show. There's a band out there called Root Rot, too, believe it or not. But other than that, I like if I have a... Um, if I have like a guest speaker that I'm doing the show with, with in person, with you know them, us together, I like them to be kind of a layman. I like them not to really know a lot about horror, so they can be almost like, you know, you can fuck with them. So I try to pick them, you know, like you know they, they, they have them as the the core people I ask questions to because it's just funny. I want my listeners. The listeners are probably people like us, you know, that are really into like horror movies like hardcore and they they but the that's our my listeners that's why I want them to experience what the, you know I got to listen to on it cuz normally my normally my friends are not you know in that whole horror genre cuz i mean half my friends i'd say 80% of them don't know who fucking ultraman is welcome to the midnight podcast podcast of get everything zombie once again I'm your host root rot what's going on hello hello yeah <laughs> 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 like I have a, a friend of mine, Halal, and he's a he's a Yemen, Yemenese, and he uh, he really is not a big horror movie fan, you know. And but I make him watch the horror movies with me, and I, I try to fuck with them as best I can, you know. And I'll, like what I'll do is I'll I'll uh, talk with them, and I'll draw like a penis on a dry board, and he'll be talking, and he'll, you know, when I'm recording, I'm going to point over to the board, you know, kind of silently, and show him that there's a penis, and try to get his reaction, you know, because he's, he's a cool guy like that, but he's all, you know, he's all Muslimed up, you know, so it's like, you know, he's all Jesus'd up, and, well, not Jesus, Allah'd up, and, because I, Halal is a lot more fun to fuck with when it comes to, because it's like, in the, in the Arabic community, gay is like really bad, and it's just funny to fuck with him. 
because he's a real homophobe, you know, and it's just, it's great. You know, I like to talk about as much uncomfortable shit as possible, you know. You know what would be really nice, and I say this in quite honestly, I think, you ever been fishing? I did, when I was young. You've never been fishing here? No. We should go on a fishing trip. No. Why? I don't have that patience. I'm no, but what would, no, here, we'd go on a fishing trip, and then we'd, we'd go out real early in the morning, and I'd look over, I'd catch you staring at me, and you'd kind of, like, put your head down, and I'd look over at you, and it'd get a little hot in the day, we'd take our shirts off. Yeah, <laughs> talk now. It would be awesome. Yeah, talk, talk well, then what would happen was, oh. we'd go back to the cabin, <laughs> and we, we would realize... This is your show, right? Why don't you talk we about would zombies and the ugly shit, you know? Why are you talking about Mahoto? We would realize that our, our unforbidden love, no, you're talking and we would make love. Because we would look at each other in the boat all day with our shirts off. You're going to you gonna put this shit on the show? No. Come on, dog. No, I won't. Dog. Yeah, come on. Don't do that. No, I won't. <laughs> How you doing? He's more in the magic. I'm not really in the magic. He does card tricks and stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's good. They're cool. You just go up to him and ask him, just say, hey, can I pick a card? He usually says that. But you go up and you take a card and he does magic tricks and stuff. So this is it's called the spring. And you, you spring the cards down like that. And I thought in my head, I thought if I could spring the cards like that, that I could do any trick. And that's not the case. That's not the case at all. I, I like the more like the more complex stuff. Like uh, it's called this is called the worm. This is a Dan and Dave box move, right here, and it's called the worm like that. And you, and you can stick the cards in like that and close them all up like that. But actually, if I can get it right, my hands are very tacky. This is this is one of the hardest moves besides the pass that worked. It's called the one-handed shuffle. And what you do is you take the cards and you feed them into one another like this, and you, you turn it over and you shuffle the deck like that. You know what it is? I think what I really like about it is like there's so few people that can relate with the whole, you know, like I said, 90% of my friends don't even know who fucking Ultraman is. So, but if I say, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah to him, he knows, you know, and it's kind of cool. And that's, I think that's one of the links that, that, you know, that kind of bonded us, you know, in that, in that aspect, you know. And I like to brag about like all the women I get and how he gets none. Well, uh, over 15 he gets. They're usually about 14. So yeah. this is a, this is a red hanky. Okay. You know, and what you do, you you take the red hanky. And yeah. You shove the red hanky into, into the into the into your palm like this, and you put you just give a little you give a little thing, and what happens is it disappears. The hanky completely disappears. And what you want to do is you want to pull it out of the air, and all you got to do is just go, and it comes right back again. And then that is the red hanky trick. Welcome to the Midnight Podcast. I'm your host Root Rot, and this is my big exciting. Adventure out to Minneapolis, Minia. Yeah. Yeah, Minneapolis. Mindianapolis. Mindianapolis. That's what his fucker was saying last night. Mindianapolis. And that, that voice you hear right there is rock and roll Ray. I came out here for my big uh, pseudo gay adventure. With yeah, rock and pseudo roll gay Ray. adventure. Yeah. Right. And um, come on, Paul, come over here. Yeah. The, the the voice you hear right there is Paul. He is a band. Not, not so, that. Oh, sorry. Say, say your whole name for me, please. Paul von Stetzel. And he's the director of the movie that, a uh, documentary that he's yeah. doing upon uh, Root Rot, myself, and uh, Rock and Roll Ray. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, yeah. and, and, and uh, you know, just, we're at Stub Herb Bar. Stub and Herbs. Stub and Herbs. Stub and Herbs on the, uh, the, the, the U of M campus. U of, U of M meaning University of Minnesota. Absolutely. Man. Not U of M. Not, not the. No. Nope. Mason Gold. Whoa. Ease down, man. Ease down. We're all okay. Well, we're all no, friends here. Dude, I don't, I don't,